start your clock. Every second and a half, someone in America asks Google how to play chess. The online portal chess.com has registered 28 million players, and Amazon is apologizing to clients because many chess sets ordered online won't be available in time for Christmas. The meteoric rise in the popularity of this ancient battle royale has a lot to do with the popularity of The Queen's Gambit, a hit Netflix show about the rise of a troubled chess prodigy. It's an amazing show. It was super fun. That's what drew me to this, because I just finished watching it last night. This is the biggest thing since 50 years. Fisher against the Russians in uh, Reykjavik. The last time this country saw this uh, madness, or what we call chess fever, Americans have always had a complex relationship with chess, in part because it was one small battlefield of the Cold War between Russia and the United States. In 1972, the American Bobby Fischer won a game dubbed the Game of the Century, when he beat the Soviet chess champion Boris Spassky. The Netflix show The Queen's Gambit is something of a retelling of that story. It focuses on an orphaned girl from Kentucky who beats her own demons and an unbeatable Soviet grandmaster in a game that transcends the decades-long conflict between the two great superpowers. The antagonists, the Soviet chess champions, are depicted very warmly. There's no extra conflict added to the show about the Cold War, about fighting. There's no mean-spiritedness. World chess champion Garry Kasparov was supposed to play the Soviet grandmaster Borgov in the show, but instead he choreographed all the games in the show. He says the games are all real. Kasparov controlled every single one of them. It was a question of prestige for me. I knew that my colleagues would be watching the show very closely, watching every game. And I promised myself that they wouldn't have anything to criticize, that each game would be perfect. Even the chess figures the orphan Beth Harmon conjures on her ceiling are not just the show's invention. In reality, chess players, when they think about chess, even during a game, oftentimes there are chess players who actually literally look up at the ceiling and are calculating variations. American-Hungarian Susan Polgar became a grandmaster at the age of 15. I was never involved with the alcohol or drugs or lived the lifestyle as Beth Harmon, uh, but uh, I, of course, have been told a lot worse things, and including sexual harassment and including physical intimidation. But, you know, verbal abuse was just an everyday thing, you know, that... Uh, Girls can't play chess, you know, don't, girls don't belong in chess, go play with dolls, not with chess, chess is for guys, women are not as smart as guys. The show, however, focuses on the idea that the game of chess is humane and eternal, and even in the middle of the Cold War, there's room for warm embraces. The last scene in the show, she goes to the boulevard where men are playing chess. Lisa Harman. Over 50 movies have been made about chess, but not many managed to make the game look so human and warm and fun. For Elena Wolf in Florida, NRI's VOA News.